I'm about to reveal something that might shock you. Your doctor checks your blood pressure every visit, checks your cholesterol religiously, tells you everything looks fine. But there's another number, one most doctors aren't even testing, that's silently destroying your arteries right now. And when this number is high, your risk of heart attack doesn't just increase a little, it multiplies by four, four times the risk, but nobody's checking it. I'm Dr. Claire Whitmore, and after two decades as a cardiologist, I've watched this same tragedy unfold over and over. Patients walk in with perfect blood pressure, perfect cholesterol, feeling completely healthy. Then suddenly, massive stroke, devastating heart attack. And when we go back and look at their labs, there it is. The warning sign we missed. The number that predicted everything months in advance. This number measures inflammation in your arteries. And inflammation is the real killer. It's what makes cholesterol plaques unstable. It's what causes them to rupture and create blood clots. It's what turns a stable situation into a medical emergency. The pharmaceutical companies know about this. The research is overwhelming. But most doctors still aren't testing it routinely. And even when they do test it, they don't know what to do with the results. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what this number is why it predicts heart attacks better than cholesterol, and most importantly, what to do if yours is dangerously high. This isn't theory. This is life-saving information that could prevent you from becoming another statistic. Stay with me. Let me tell you about James. James was 68 years old, retired accountant, meticulous about his health. His blood pressure was perfect, 118 over 74. His cholesterol was excellent, total 180, LDL 95, HDL 55. Every year, his doctor looked at these numbers and said, everything looks great, James. Keep doing what you're doing. James felt confident. Then, one morning while getting dressed, he felt a strange sensation in his head. He sat down. When he tried to stand, his right side wouldn't move. His arm hung limp. His leg wouldn't support him. Words came out garbled. Stroke. Massive stroke. He survived, but lost function in his right arm permanently. His speech is still slurred today. Here's what makes this devastating. Three months before that stroke, James had routine blood work. Buried in those results was a number called CRP, C-reactive protein. His level was 8.2. The lab flagged it as high, but James's doctor saw it and dismissed it. Probably from a recent infection, the doctor said. James wasn't sick. He felt fine. That CRP of 8.2 wasn't from an infection. It was a warning that inflammation was destroying his arteries from the inside. The medical community has known about CRP for decades. Research dating back to the 1990s showed this clearly. When CRP is elevated and you're not sick, it means vascular inflammation. Your arteries are being damaged. The lining of your blood vessels is becoming unstable. And unstable arteries lead to blood clots. Blood clots lead to strokes and heart attacks. James's CRP of 8.2 was screaming this warning three months in advance. But nobody listened. Here's how it works. CRP stands for C-reactive protein. Your liver produces it in response to inflammation anywhere in your body. When you have an infection, CRP goes up. When you have an injury, CRP goes up. But when CRP is chronically elevated and you're not sick, that inflammation is coming from your blood vessels. And vascular inflammation is the number one predictor of heart attacks and strokes. Better than cholesterol. Better than blood pressure. Better than family history. Studies show that people with CRP above three have twice the heart attack risk of people below one. Above five, three times the risk. Above eight like James, four times the risk. Your arteries are actively being damaged when CRP is that high, inflamed, unstable, ready to rupture or clot at any moment. This is the number that matters most for predicting cardiovascular events, yet most doctors aren't checking it. Now let me tell you about Margaret. Margaret was 71 years old. She heard me speak about CRP at a health seminar. The next week, she asked her doctor to check it. He looked puzzled. CRP? That's not a standard test. Why do you want that? Margaret explained she'd heard it predicts heart attacks. Her doctor sighed. 
clearly thought she was being difficult, but he ordered it. Her CRP came back at 6.8. High. Very high. He called her. Your CRP is elevated, but you're probably fighting off a cold or something. Are you sick? Margaret felt fine. Well, it's probably nothing then. We can recheck in a few months if you want. Margaret didn't wait. She came to see me. CRP of 6.8. Her blood pressure was perfect. Cholesterol was perfect. But that CRP told me her arteries were in serious trouble. Here's what Margaret's doctor didn't understand. Here's what most doctors miss completely. CRP is nonspecific, yes. It goes up with infections and injuries. But when CRP is persistently elevated and you're not sick, when it's high and you feel completely fine, that elevation is coming from your blood vessels. Vascular inflammation. And vascular inflammation is the single biggest predictor of heart attacks and strokes in existence. Why don't doctors check it? Because they're taught in medical school that CRP is nonspecific, not useful for diagnosis. They think, it goes up with everything, so what's the point? But that's outdated thinking. When someone over 60 has a CRP above 3 and they're not sick, that's incredibly specific. That's their arteries being destroyed by chronic inflammation. And it needs aggressive treatment immediately. The research is overwhelming. A landmark study called the Jupiter Trial followed 18,000 people with normal cholesterol but elevated CRP. Half got a statin, half got placebo. The statin group had 44% fewer heart attacks and strokes. 44%. All because they treated the inflammation, not the cholesterol. This study was published in 2008. It's been 17 years. Yet most doctors still aren't routinely checking CRP. We started Margaret on an intensive anti-inflammatory protocol, changed her diet completely, eliminated refined carbohydrates and sugar, increased omega-3 fatty acids dramatically, added curcumin and other natural anti-inflammatories, started her on a statin even though her cholesterol was normal because statins are powerful anti-inflammatory drugs. Three months later, her CRP dropped from 6.8 to 1.9. Her stroke risk had plummeted. Now let me tell you about Robert, because Robert's story reveals what drives CRP higher in the first place. Robert was 73 years old. CRP of 9.4. Dangerously high. I looked at him. Overweight. About 40 pounds over ideal. Mostly belly fat. His diet was heavy carbohydrates and sugar. Cereal, bread, pasta, daily. He walked maybe 15 minutes a few times a week. Nothing consistent. Here's what was driving his inflammation. That belly fat around his organs isn't just sitting there. It's metabolically active tissue, producing inflammatory chemicals called cytokines. These cytokines flood into the bloodstream, travel to the liver, trigger massive CRP production. But it wasn't just the weight. His diet was making everything worse. Every time he ate refined carbohydrates, his blood sugar spiked. High blood sugar triggers inflammatory responses throughout the body. Multiple times daily, day after day, year after year, chronic inflammation. And his sedentary lifestyle meant his body had no mechanism to clear the inflammation naturally. Exercise is one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory interventions we have. Robert wasn't doing any. We completely overhauled everything. Eliminated refined carbs. Cut sugar to nearly zero. Increased vegetables and healthy fats dramatically. Got him walking 45 minutes daily. Added resistance training twice weekly. The weight came off. 32 pounds in six months. His CRP? Dropped from 9.4 to 2.1. A 78% reduction. His heart attack risk had plummeted. Now let me tell you about Patricia, because her story reveals another major cause most people never consider. Patricia was 76. Thin not overweight at all, ate well, exercised regularly, but her CRP was 7.3. What was driving it? I asked about her sleep. Terrible, she said. I wake up constantly, maybe get five hours total, always tired. Her husband interrupted. She snores like crazy, and she stops breathing sometimes. It scares me. Sleep apnea. That was the answer. When you stop breathing during sleep, oxygen levels plummet. Your body goes into emergency mode. 
Stress hormones flood your system. Inflammation spikes. This happens over and over, all night long, every single night. Chronic inflammation destroying your arteries while you sleep. We got Patricia tested. Severe obstructive sleep apnea, stopping breathing 47 times per hour. We started her on CPAP therapy to keep her airway open. Three months later, CRP dropped from 7.3 to 1.6, just from treating her sleep. Let me tell you about Helen, because this cause is incredibly common and almost never addressed. Helen was 69, CRP of 8.9, not overweight, no sleep apnea, diet was reasonable. I asked about her dental health. My gums bleed when I brush, she said. They have for years. That's gum disease, periodontal disease, and it's a massive driver of systemic inflammation. When your gums are infected, bacteria enter your bloodstream every time you chew or brush. These bacteria trigger immune responses. Inflammation spreads throughout your body, attacks your arteries. Studies show people with severe gum disease have two to three times the heart attack risk of people with healthy gums. We sent Helen to a periodontist. Deep cleaning, antibiotics, improved oral hygiene. Three months later, CRP dropped from 8.9 to 2.4. Her stroke risk had plummeted, all from treating her gums. Now let me tell you about Thomas, because his question is what matters most. If my CRP is high, what actually lowers it? Thomas was 74, CRP of 7.1. We addressed everything. He lost weight, changed diet, started exercising, fixed his sleep, treated his gums. Six months later, CRP was down to 3.2. Better, much better, but still not ideal, still above three. So we added medication, a statin. Not because his cholesterol was high, his cholesterol was fine, but because statins are powerful anti-inflammatory drugs. People think statins just lower cholesterol, they don't understand the mechanism. Statins reduce inflammation dramatically. Studies show they lower CRP by 25 to 50% independent of cholesterol effects. We started Thomas on rosuvastatin, low dose. Three months later, CRP was 1.1, perfect. His arteries were finally protected. But understand this clearly, medication alone won't fix high CRP. You must address root causes the belly fat, the poor diet, the lack of exercise, the sleep apnea, the gum disease, all of it. Medication helps, but lifestyle changes are essential. Without them, you're applying Band-Aids to a problem that keeps getting worse. Let me tell you about Susan, because her story shows what's possible when you do everything right. Susan was 72, heard me speak about CRP, asked her doctor to check it. CRP came back 8.7, extremely high. Her doctor said, probably an infection. Susan wasn't sick. She didn't wait for a recheck. She came to me. We did complete assessment. She was overweight, diet heavy in carbs and sugar, rarely exercised, had undiagnosed sleep apnea, gums bled when she brushed. Everything was driving inflammation. We created a comprehensive plan, eliminated refined carbs, cut sugar almost completely, increased vegetables, fish, healthy fats started walking an hour daily, added strength training three times weekly, got her sleep apnea treated, sent her to periodontist, started omega-3 supplements, added curcumin, started low-dose statin. It was a lot. It required changing decades-old habits. But Susan was motivated. She'd seen what stroke did to her sister. Three months later, CRP was 4.1. Better, but not enough. We continued. Six months, CRP 2.3, nine months, 1.4, perfect. Susan lost 43 pounds, looked different, felt different, more energy than she'd had in 20 years. But most importantly, her arteries were protected. Her inflammation was controlled. Her stroke and heart attack risk had dropped by 75%. Here's exactly what you need to do. Step one, get your CRP checked. Ask specifically for high sensitivity CRP, or HSCRP. That's the test that measures low levels accurately. Don't let your doctor tell you it's unnecessary. This number could save your life. Step two, understand your result. Below one is optimal. One to three is moderate risk. Above three is high risk. 
Above 5 is very high risk. Above 8 is extremely high risk. If you're above 3, you need to act. If you're above 5, you need to act aggressively. Step 3. Address the causes. Lose belly fat if you're carrying extra weight. That fat is producing inflammatory chemicals constantly. Change your diet. Eliminate refined carbohydrates and sugar. They spike blood sugar and trigger inflammation. Increase omega-3 fatty acids from fish. Eat more vegetables. They contain natural anti-inflammatory compounds. Step 4. Get tested for sleep apnea if you snore or feel tired despite sleeping. Sleep apnea causes massive inflammation. Treating it can drop CRP dramatically. Get your gums checked if they bleed. Gum disease is a major inflammation driver that's easily treated. Step 5. Start exercising if you're not already. Walk at least 30 minutes every day. Add strength training if possible. Exercise is one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory interventions available. It clears inflammatory chemicals from your bloodstream naturally. Step 6. Consider supplements. Omega-3 fish oil, 2 to 3 grams daily. Curcumin with black pepper extract for absorption. These have strong anti-inflammatory effects supported by research. Step 7. Talk to your doctor about medication if lifestyle changes aren't enough. A statin can reduce inflammation dramatically, even if your cholesterol is normal. Don't let anyone tell you statins are only for cholesterol. They're anti-inflammatory drugs. If your CRP is high, you need inflammation reduction. Step 8. Recheck in three months. Verify what you're doing is working. Adjust if needed. Keep rechecking every three to six months until you're consistently below two. Your CRP level right now could be the difference between staying healthy or having a stroke like James, between protecting your arteries or letting inflammation destroy them. Don't let anyone tell you CRP doesn't matter. Don't let anyone dismiss an elevated result as probably just an infection when you're not sick. Demand the test, get the number. If it's high, do everything necessary to bring it down. This isn't optional. This is life or death. CRP predicts heart attacks and strokes better than cholesterol, better than blood pressure. It's the most important cardiovascular risk marker we have. Yet most people have never heard of it because doctors aren't checking it. That ends today for you. If this video opened your eyes to something your doctor isn't testing, share it. Send it to everyone you know over 60. Subscribe to this channel because my mission is giving you information about the tests and numbers that actually predict your cardiovascular future. Thank you for watching, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next video where we continue revealing the truth about staying healthy that most doctors don't have time to explain.